our next map, our next match, looking more or less ready to go. We're going to be moving over to a lower bracket map for our next one, which is going to see Wush play Hostile Takeover. And we have already seen Hostile Takeover play today. They were able to beat Top Stop Toxicity earlier on uh, when we had Ollie and Man of Class covering you today. So, a lot of games under their belt today. Uh, same for Wush, and I guess we're looking to see really if they can keep the momentum up and manage another win here today, Lafon. Yeah, I'm uh, definitely excited to see how this one plays out because uh, we, we went, you know, obviously the upper bracket has had its had its run through. Time to look at some of the teams that are on their last mm. legs, so to speak, yeah. here in this tournament. Uh, a real urgency in some of these games coming up. Right, right. And uh, I, d I don't know if you've had a chance to check out these rosters, but Wish are a team that I've been following for a little while. And, I, and I've got to admit to having a little bit of a vested interest in their success. They do have two players on their roster that play in a uh, local UK LAN series that I've been covering for a couple of years now. And so, you know, having seen them on the roster makes me think, okay, I would I would like these guys that I've been covering to, to, to do well. Um, but I think a roster that has a lot of potential, I just don't think they've really been given... Uh, enough time in the oven, enough time to shine here today. So which is why we see them in the lower bracket. I think they have the potential to win over Hostile Takeover, but as you say, a lot of games under the belts of both these teams today remains to be seen whether or not they've got the gas in the tank to make it happen. I, I think that that's actually alludes to something I've been kind of thinking of and sort of, you know, thinking about for the last little while, and that's Overwatch as a, as a, as a kind of a competitive title has mm. taken, I mean, the, the roots have sort of uh, refreshed themselves, right? We're seeing new players come in and, and do spectacularly against some of the uh, the mm. older talent, right? Um, and, and obviously in, in Contenders, we've seen a lot of great players. In Contenders Trials, we've seen a lot of great players. But I'm really excited to see that new wave of new talent, right? The, the mm. youngest generation coming in, and we've kind of stepped up and improved as time has gone on. So I'm mm. um, very excited to see how you know how these players perform because I think it's more of the future of Overwatch here in play. Uh, it true, and I truly mean the future of Overwatch. You know, the next five years, for example, um, mm. uh, in, in terms of what we're seeing at, uh, at in some of these games so far. Yeah, it's interesting. Like if you look at the let's call them the first generation of Overwatch players, particularly in the Overwatch League, particularly in some of the Western teams, where we see players that have moved on from from other titles that maybe have similar genetics, similar DNA to the way that Overwatch works, but, you know, are, are their own thing. And I think when you start and you have that level of advantage, if you've been playing a, a team-based shooter previously, then you, go, you have a natural leg up. But the guys that we're seeing coming up now, the young players, in some cases, the players that aren't even old enough to make it into Overwatch League yet, who Overwatch is the only thing they've played. Like, it's it's in their blood, it's in their bones, you know, that, that's that's how they've got to where they are today. I think those guys in particular are the guys that we are interested in seeing develop, the people that just have it so baked into every bit of their competitive play that they just outmatch, outstrip, outclass some of these older players. Yeah, and I mean, it's 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 a good and healthy thing to do oh, yeah. to have, right? Like it's it's uh, it's it's not so much a, a denigration of the old guard so much as a celebration of the new. Oh yeah, uh, and, and I think you know that's that's what we're kind of leaning towards here as. Uh, we, we get a we get a chance to see what the uh, rosters will be like in just a moment. But mm. uh, as you said, uh, you know, heading into this, it, it's going to be really. I mean, these teams are new to me, right? They're yeah. they're teams that I haven't had a chance to really see. Obviously, you know, with the previous teams we've had on stream, I've covered a lot of those players in in other in you know in contenders and contenders trials and, and and sort of had a chance to see them evolve as time has gone mm. on. Now we're getting a chance to see how the next. Uh, you know how how do that how does that contrast with what, with, with what we've got in here in this lower mm -hmm. bracket game, and that's really what I think is going to be very interesting to me. And uh, you know, as we as we look in, into this, obviously on control is going to be all about who comes out swinging first. And as I said, urgency definitely has to be in play here because mm -hmm. this is your last chance. Every match from here on out is your last chance when you're in the lower bracket. Yeah, I mean, there are always consequences to these matches in a tournament format, but the consequences get a little bit sharper down in the lower bracket because there isn't a lower, lower bracket. The lower, lower bracket is uh, Twitch chat where you get to, to watch what happens instead of taking part in what happens. So both of these teams fighting for their shot at redemption and getting back into the upper bracket at the end of the lower bracket and having a shot at that number one place, uh, having a shot at that uh, contender's trials uh, position. So, yeah, a lot to play here for both of these teams. Uh, before we jump in, I think we should be having our first map starting very shortly. It should be Li Zhang Tower. I wanted to highlight one more player on the side of uh, Wush. 
which is Eli, who is, as far as I understand, not a permanent member of this roster, but has come in as a uh, kind of a seventh man here, but is a very well-established DPS player. But I know them specifically to be a, a Sombra specialist, and I'd love to see that adaptation. We haven't seen a lot of Sombra so far today from our teams, and having Eli in the roster makes me think that maybe this is a wrinkle we start to see. I think, yeah, the Sombra, the Sombra conversation is interesting because Historically, Sombra has been the counter to Wrecking Ball, right? Like yeah. in terms of what we've expected to do in the past. But we've seen a real adaptation from you know from from Wrecking Ball players in in the most recent times in terms of how they approach you know some of those fights with a, with a Sombra to kind of make her less effective. And I think that also steps into play. Obviously, we're going to start off on Control Center here on Lijiang Tower and one of the close quarter maps. Um, I would not. Ex I would be very surprised if both teams run sort of that. Mm. Uh, that space composition, right? We're, we're more likely to see the Reinhardt specifically step out. Um, and I mean, at least right now, Slade are hovering over it. Well, it looks like we might not be getting that from Funny Team. Uh, sorry, I've got the wrong name in front of me. Looks like we're not going to be seeing that from Wushia. Task and Ayanador coming in on the Wrecking Ball and the Roadhog. So the Vault and Chain composition coming out here against a much more traditional brawl. We'll see an interesting rotation coming out here, though, in that we've got Arka and Eli playing over by the open, exposed edge of the map. Yeah, we're going to see the echo in as well from Eli, so no Sombra here as the turret gets taken down. Oh, uh, This terrible. is going to be really interesting. The turret is actually going to be a real nuisance for the echo in the air. So, you know, zoning up Torgorn could be a huge oh. difference maker. Well, no Lots longer an there. issue. Yeah, Task just squashes them down, but we lose Disclosure here as well. And it all takes a breather and is being very heavily pressured there. Lands the hook! And that's going to be Wush looking to come in here with a pretty quick cap. There's the <laughs> there it is. Task. There it is. Uh, very, very fun. Uh, we're actually going to see a switch, actually, as a result. Roadhog Arisa. Okay. okay. All right. That's going to be really interesting. Uh, okay. I mean, you know, Arisa... I've seen this here for a very long time. Yeah, Arisa is what we would call her shield being paper thin these days. So we'll see if that... In fact, it breaks immediately. Yeah, I, I guess you got to be looking for the combos there with the hole in the hook. I think that hook just on its own there, followed up by the Helix Rocket takes Task out of the fight. But it's tank for tank. Res comes through and brings Slater back in, but right into the waiting hold hog of Ayanador gets hooked out of it. And this has been a beautiful punch back here by Hostile Takeover. Yeah. <laughs> wow. I guess you could call every one of their point flips a hostile takeover, You eh? would, yeah. Well, that's that joke well and truly done now for the rest of the game. Thank you very much, Lafon. I'm sure one of us will slip in at some point in time. Don't worry. I'm but, just salty I mean, that you got it first. <laughs> uh, gotta be on the ball there. Hey, another one. Uh, now we've got the ults coming online, though, as Eli does have the duplicate. Ooh, Golden Wind, a lot of pressure coming his way, and... Arka with the Helix Rocks is going to take him out of it. And now Arka has the high ground and the tag visor up as well. And it is going to be all a DPS in the kill feed here for Hostile Takeover. As uh, Wish come back and knock them off of the points. That's a, I mean, it's a really clear duplicate that just gets two pulse bombs and obviously the high ground. We all know what the high ground gives you. Oh, yeah. Uh, just complete control. So, uh, and, and I mean, obviously, Golden Wind being chased out by a task, which then allowed, uh, you know, Arca to get to get value with the soldiers a big deal. Now going to make a switch over to Tracer. So, very interesting adaptations here mid map as Eli gets up onto the high ground again, escaping the line of sight of the robot. Aria now coming in very close to that whole hog themselves, going to be looking for the hook. Sees, oh, actually slightly misjudges the hook there, looking for the wrecking ball. Ayanador is going to go down here as well. Rez comes back in and brings Slater back into the fight. And as Eli comes back in again as well, hostile takeover. Oh. Currently looking like they're in charge of the back of a heck of a fourth form pick from Draven. We saw Draven do particularly well in the match we saw earlier today. And he's living up to that potential. It's 83 to 29. Wush need to win one more fight and they take the opening point of Lee Jang. That was a really impressive pulse bomb from Raven though onto the um, we can see that replay actually Eli coming back. in and walks into Arca I think who was going for a mini health pack perhaps at that point in time and takes both of them down so really really great gameplay there from the Tracer uh, from Hostile Takeover. Yeah, it'll be very, very difficult for Wush to make their way back into the Stupid Transcendence and through the additional damage coming in from the Supercharger. So it's going to require some focused play here from Arthur and Eli to deal with at least one of those threats prior to it being a problem. But there's the opening pick. Winnie's going to go down. And with the Supercharger in over the point, there's not a lot that you can heal through. Disclosure 
did try and throw in the Transcendent Thumb, in fact did successfully throw it in the Transcendence, but couldn't find anything with it, and Hostile Takeover getting very close to equalizing the point percentage. Supercharger is all such a fantastic resource, right? Uh, it just... sheer damage output is insane. But, uh, I mean, Braven has to play a little carefully here. Can't go down now. That would have been a big, big thing if Disclosure is able to get that right click off. But uh, we are now heading to that last fight territory, 85% and counting. I mean, you're looking at this being the last fight now for, uh, for what? Well, we'll see the mines come out there for Tass, but Tass themselves falling very, very low. And as Hostile Takeover manage a couple of picks here, it's looking very dire now for Whoosh. Eli taken out of the Jupiter Gate before that whole hog could come online and a golden win with a tactical visor just chasing what's left of Wush away from the point and there is the first cap hostile takeover with one on the Jeng Tower. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a really good uh it's a really good job to zone out the main the tanks for uh for Wush that in that encounter there and then you know obviously the whole hog getting a value towards the end. So Ariel to being a very big part of why hostile takeover able to close out that round. And, uh, I mean, now as we head to Garden, are we going to see any adaptations, or is that Arisa going to continue to make its mark? I don't know. I feel like this is a map where the Recce Ball can get a little bit more free value. Not that there's no value available on the other maps, but, you know, the environmental kill potential on the opening run through here is huge and can't be disregarded. And we're actually going to see, yeah, exactly. We're going to see that change over. And I think we may actually end up seeing full mirrors. Oh, no. There's a break coming in. No pocket for Eli's Echo. I guess trying to disrupt uh, Slater as he comes through here and just a little bit more of a threat to reduce that momentum. Did see a lot of damage come through there onto Slater. I think mostly care of Arca looking the old charge over here. Braven focus down, recalls back to almost full health and ready to rejoin the fight here. This is looking to be another long drag out fight, although with Slater going down early to Eli, this might be where the fight starts to turn. Was the D-Mate coming through onto Ayanador? Ariel still holding onto theirs here as well. Task able to get one off in the distance, finds the environmental kill. This really could still go either way, although it looks like the first cap's gonna come through for Whoosh. It is gonna be the first cap, but that does not mean the fight is theirs, especially with Golden Wind taking down his counterpart. And indeed, it's going to be the return here from Hostile Takeover. They just need the cleanup now onto Task. Well, Task is still there, did find a kill, keeping this going, and the race gets interrupted by Ayanador. Task is going to go down, and we see the D-Mate come through onto Ayanador as well. Raven's still holding on to the... On to the uh, on, Wait. Onto his order for now, and uh, a Wush bringing this back? Eli's yeah. going to go down, but Disclosure and Arca is still there. There's the Pulse Bomb, blows up Winnie, but this has been great capture percentage here for Wush. Honestly, it doesn't matter if they don't win this out, like... 33% and climbing here with Task still alive and keeping this fight going. Arca finds the pick onto Adnai here as well. There's the Demek onto Ariel. Task finds one with a minefield. And this was a phenomenal hold for Wush. Yeah, that was spectacular. Yeah, okay, Eli. I mean, you know what? All right. I guess I guess after a point like that, you kind of deserve the uh, disrespect coming in. Disclosure was a big part of that, though. Two key takeoffs at the end by the Zen player. And, I mean... You know, when your Zen comes in clutch in a fight like that, he's able to stay alive solo. Remember, there isn't a ton of heal here when the brick goes down, so. Ooh, self-destruct over the top. Everybody makes themselves nice and scarce on that one. Buys a little bit more time here for Wush with no picks on the back of it. Not to be too worried about. We'll see Ayanod actually find able to find Slater here. Eli has the duplicate on board and ready to go. Probably not going to be duplicating the Echo. Not currently possible. Not any value in that one. Arc with the Pulse Bomb ready to go. Needs to be careful to thread this around the waiting defense matrix of Ariel. Or just uh, play around the back here has the Mercy in their sights for now, almost getting them down. Big health back available for them for Adnar to get back into the fight, but a lot of space being gained here. Wush have controlled this space masterfully with the self-destruct this time out from Ariel as Brevin gets the opening pick. When he's going to go down here, and it's the duplicate available for Eli. Picks up the D.Va. Very quickly going to have that self-destruct online, but Ayanador and Task are now both down. And even with that self-destruct, it would need to be massive here to secure enough frags to keep this going. The flip's going to come through, and Hostile Takeover finally getting some ultimate percentage on the board. Weirdly, that flip coming in with these kills might actually be the best thing for them. They'll respawn without the overtime, uh, without the overtime spawns in effect, so they'll be back pretty quick. And that'll allow them a fight here before, you know, the 20% mark or so. Now, on the retake, I mean, you've got the Pulse Bomb available to Braven, who's done a good job of, you know, landing them. 
But uh, I think this duplicate is going to be a key difference maker here uh, for uh, for Hostile Takeover. So Golden Wind with a nice angle here as they catch Wush coming around the backside to get onto the points. It will be available, but actually early pick Disclosure is down, and we saw how important Disclosure has been to these fights. There's no res available. This is almost certainly a lost fight here for Wush. The one thing they have in their favor is they are coming up on some key ultimates for this next fight. And another great pick off there as the Arctic comes in on the flank, and the Zen spots him from a mile away. It's going to be the reset now, so a good time by here now in terms of the flex support play. Hostile takeover. You can see how aggressively they're playing off the back of the fence. Yeah. And uh, of course, some of the big difference makers here are going to be the tank ultimate. So I am going to go with the self destruct task with the minefield as they are approaching the point. And in fact, the minefield is going to come out from task, but it's mine sweeper time there. And task gets focused down by Golden Wing. Self-destruct, a no, oh no, I had it all with three, the D-Mag onto Aerial as well, have they managed to do this? They actually do that in this all on the back of that massive ult from Ayanador finding three, and that is it, one on one on Lee Jang, we get to see one more round of Lee Jang Lafon. What a well-placed self-destruct from the D.Va to catch that many players though, Phil, so, I mean, I genuinely do not expect self-destructs to get more than, you know, one or two kills, so when I see them light the kill feed like that, especially basically unassisted it's uh it, i mean you have to give credit there what a spectacular play by anador yeah uh, it, it, it's weird to me lafon that you and i between us put together my banana bubble promotional video that talked about a self-destruct finding massive value kind of because it's almost a joke like the self-destruct very seldom gets kills these days like so the fact that we've seen so much value on the back of this map is uh, you know it's, it's funny to me I mean, you know, a lot of the times when you see that self-destruct, it's really for zone control. It's not for, you know, pure, you know, uh, elimination power. So mm -hmm. definitely agreed there. You know, we can see no adaptations here. Actually, no, I'm not going to make a switch over to the uh, rig as well. I can say no from Wish, no changes. As Task gets in the back line yet again. Yeah, Task now with the over the score, getting back to safety. But Ark is going to go down. Looks like Task kind of left him behind there a little bit, and Golden Wind was able to focus them down. Yeah, I like that beautiful predict there from Golden Wind. Knew that the run through was going to be coming there from Task. Didn't want to get taken out from the environmental kill. Calmly waits and secures the kill. That was a great, very economical first cap from Hostile Takeover. And now they start to, uh, you know, build up towards the back line. Slater's going to get stunned up, but we'll get out. No problems at all. Is I think the you know the first person to come to the ultimate here is going to be Braven. Seventy percent takes down uh, Winnie as well. Yeah, so now you're looking at the tracers really stepping forward to this objective and, and it started to put uh, you know execute their pressure on on the back line. We've already got one fifth point capped here for hostile takeover. Uh, Wish need to be a little bit more careful and focused on their way in. They can't leave Disclosure behind like this. We've seen what the difference maker they can be for Wush, and that's going to be more time burnt off the clock for them. Yep, and uh, I mean, you know, even still, these have been fights that have been won with essentially one or two picks, right? You're not getting a full team wipe, and so these are more stagger fights than anything else. See, Braven already tried to, you know, play aggressively, get value out of that Tracer. Oh man, that is a lot of damage coming the way of Hostile Takeover Zen. And that's the 5v6. This time, Disclosure is in the fight and ready to go as well. No ults available just yet, although Eli's duplicate has come online. They're not going to need it here. They're already up in the fight. Although, what a punch back. What a one two combo from the Helix Rocket and the Pulse Bomb taking down Disclosure and Winnie. Ark is still here. And we've got the duplicate online. Eli very casually runs down what is left of Ariel and a quick cap here for Wush. Uh, I, I mean, Eli panicked a bit on that. I mean, as much as that two kills came in, I don't necessarily think the duplicate was absolutely necessary, but that's going to be one thing they don't have here for this next fight. So you're hoping that Arca is able to win this duel out on the side. Both re recalls being forced now on Braven, so Tracy will have to set back as uh, later he gets caught out in, in, uh, in choke as well. Arca has Pulse Bomb looking somewhere to stick that as soon as possible. Ooh, and with the Orb of Discord there on his opposite number onto Braven, might have been able to win the 1v1, one -one, but Abandon decided to come back to the front line to keep the fight going. Here's the Tactical Visor for Golden Wind over the top of the Transcendence as well. Golden Wind is able to find one here. self from Iron and all, we will find another. So a one-for-one -one trade right now. But at the minute, it is still Wush in control of the point. Rally is online for Hostile Takeover, which makes it that little bit harder for them to go. And what an unfortunate POV. 
Disclosure knocked over the side and taken out of the fight. Hostile takeover looking to come back here and flip. We still have a little bit of presence there from Arca to get a few more percent capped. And I mean, they still are in the lead, our hostile takeover, in terms of point presence, in terms of point control. And now there's realistically nothing on the board except for the duplicate in this next fight. You know, for, for Wish, they, they come back in, they're going to need a pick off. They're going to need a hero play here from someone on their roster, either the Wrecking Ball or the Tracer. Uh, but they need someone to step up. Uh, it's, time is rapidly ticking down here for Wish to make a play for this one. That's the start of something big, though. Zenyatta is now down for Hostile Takeover, but Task more or less gives his life for it. Beautiful placement of the self destruct buys a lot of space here, but it won't stop. Hostile takeover from coming back in onto this one. Sorry, won't stop Wush from coming back in onto this one. Listen to the duplicate picked up. This time it's the brick that Eli Flex DPS player used to playing the brick, but won't find too much value with it. Eli now playing away at the back. Adnar's gonna close the distance, won't quite find the pick, but has a rally of their own and does enough bodyguarding here for hostile takeover to zone them out of the point and secure the second tick on Lee Jang. Uh, as I said, you needed that you needed that hero play from somebody, and the Wrecking Ball one pick was not enough. Just ran out of time, ran out of resources, and uh, as a result, I mean, hostile takeover. They take map number one, but I, I think we have a good series on our hand here, Phil. I think oh, this is going to yeah. be close all the way through as we see that play of the game come out at the end of the replay completing. As Hostile Takeover take the series lead, 1-0 to zero after Control. Yeah, 2-1 and one on Control puts you in a pretty good mood going forward as a caster, thinking, well, it's not going to be it's not going to be one-sided, or at the very least, it shouldn't be one-sided. This should go uh, well, at least some of the distance, if not all of the distance. But before we take you to the next map in the series, we are going to throw to a very quick break whilst we uh, give our players a chance to flex their wrists. But don't go too far, because we are back as soon as we can manage it.
Welcome back, everybody. We're ready to go straight away into, oh, almost straight away into our next map in the series, which, uh, again, I don't think anybody's going to be surprised as we move over onto a hybrid map. It's going to be King's Row this time, LaFon. Yeah, King's Row. Uh, at some point, you stop talking about the map itself because there's what, what's been said has been said as, yeah. as the map has been uh, seen so frequently. But I think one thing we want to talk about is, of course, the evolution of how uh, composition across the map. We saw, obviously, on map number one, a lot of Wrecking Ball. We've seen in the, in the entirety of the day so far, <laughs> a lot of Wrecking Ball uh, played out. So a lot of those mo high mobility compositions. But when we got to King's Row, we saw a lot of the Roadhogs step up, especially yeah. you know, in our previous series of the day. So I'm curious to see if that makes a return here as well, or if we're going to you know uh, have more shield-based gameplay around a Reinhardt, for example. Mm -hmm. I would not be surprised to see the Sigma Roadhog, uh, or even you know the Roadhog Zarya, uh, depending on the DPS, to kind of step in. But certainly, uh, I think King's Row now has more of a flavor of you know, more flavor of that control of of, mm. of that of that one shot capabilities more than anything else at that point in time. Yeah, the the, the control of uh, space and kill feed rather than the control of the map type as we went over in our previous match uh, earlier today. We're going to be starting here with uh, Wush on the defense. Uh, it's going to be hostile takeovers uh, turn of the offense first, and this is looking kind of like a hybrid between what we were expecting to see when we were talking about you know are we going to see the the Wrecking Ball Hog, or are we going to see the, the more shield-based game? We've actually got Suna in here, starting on the Reinhardt, which we uh, haven't really seen as much of as we might have done. Oh, no, yeah, and I mean, th obviously that's the sub coming in, right? Tass going to step out, Suna coming in uh, into this, uh, to this next map. With, um, uh, well, with the main tank roll, so... Not to be convinced, not to be confused with the other French Suna. <laughs> no, I, I was thinking there for a second, it's like... No, it can't. It can't be that soon. Like, it's not that soon. Uh, but e Eli coming in on the on the uh, Sombra. on Sombra is pretty much what I expected him to be doing today in his role in Wush. And we're playing. We're seeing the Sombra Reaper rush comp here with the Reinhardt. So they're going to be playing aggressively out the corner. You can see the road of the ro Roadhog. The Reinhardt positioning aggressively, trying to find. Wow, these are like two metas past coming in. <laughs> Oh, wow, and I ended up with the first pick there. We'll see Slater down nice and early. Just got absolutely melted by the rushdown, but we will actually see the trade come through as we lose Ayanador's mech as part of that. Might have been a little bit of an overextension here because Golden Wind has been able to do a lot of damage here, getting nearly 50% of that ultimate, and Ayanador's going to go down here, so this may have been an overplaying of a hand by Wush. Yeah, Eli, you know, also had, stayed a little bit longer there to try and farm up some EMP charge. Now he's the translocator in the window above Hotel. But now the objective being set upon here by Hostile Takeover. And uh, Wish trying to find that entry. Yeah, almost one tick game there for free there, but uh, we'll eventually see a little bit of point presence. A couple of picks coming through as Brain was able to get the double hit. Golden Wind still being a problem in the back here. Manages to dodge the hack and gets into a position to start to deal a little more damage. Slater raised back into the fight, so Hostile take him not quite out of that just yet. And a heck of a couple of headshots there, taking Arca out of the fight. It's going to be a fairly easy cap here. I do feel like Wush just got a little bit cocky with that one. I mean, Arca walking in a straight line and then a bad piece. I mean, e it, it, perhaps going to hit those more often than not as the duplicate comes in. Hostile Tokyo will want this to be their fight. Yeah, and uh, there's nobody on point currently contesting. We'll see a little bit of a tag in there by Suna, but Hostile Takeover making this look pretty easy, and we've used the Amplification Matrix. Use that at the end to help stop your pick, but that's going to come back so quick in this fight. Suna making a change over to Winston now. So this is, uh, you know, that Winston composition we saw um, in, uh, you know, uh, Primarily towards the end of the Overwatch League before the Roadhog made a, a, a real step in. But I, I think the one thing there is, of course, that how is the Winston going to perform into into the Ash, into the Sigma? These are questions that I think uh, remain to be answered. And Suna will have to step to the forefront because even though he doesn't look it, Winston can be pretty squishy if he gets into you know gets in too aggressively and, and doesn't manage his cooldowns properly. So well, it's a high risk, high reward pick, I think. It's the tank balance, isn't it? Is that you You have a lot of HP, but there is a lot of you to soak up bullets. And like Winston in particular has this ridiculously big head hitbox. Uh, and, you know, it, it's it's so easy to be in a position where, you know, yes, you've taken an aggressive jump in, but now suddenly you have been converted from a gorilla into nothing more than a bullet sponge. So, uh, quick pause. Uh, fix up there. Suna makes his return okay. to Winston. Okay, so... 
No big deal. EMP is going to be the key difference maker here in this fight, though, right? Uh, with Eli having online, EMP can just win you a fight outright if you land enough. If you hit enough people with the EMP, it's going to, I think, come down to that. Hmm. Um, how well can Eli execute, and how well can his team follow up? Uh, for me, one of the more interesting things here is Golden Wind stepping in on the Torbjorn, which I guess is maybe to try and discourage exactly this sort of flank, but that is a big EMP. Ark is able to bring out the uh, Death Blossom over the top and find Braven, though, so one on the back of that is is fine. You'd really like a little more on the back of an EMP, and Golden Wind was able to get the one over on Arca there as well. It's still very, very tricky here. Soon is going to go down. Arguably, that's a big advantage now for Style Takeover. Winnie's going to go down, and Golden Winnie was looking for the hammer kill. Sadly, robbed at the final couple of seconds. <laughs> yeah, still looking for, still again. looking for it. <laughs> Is he going to be robbed a third time? Um, I, I, if here's the thing, if uh, Wish had actually gotten that fight win, that would have been an absolute robbery, as the Grivenic Flux was committed to. But uh, instead, it's going to have to be a reset and an expensive one, as mm. they really only had the sound barrier and self-destruct to work with. Eli. Going to be over here on the high ground, looking for a hack, looking for a pickoff, but the rest of his team is nowhere to be found. Interesting decision on the hack. Looks like it didn't connect. In the meantime, the Ayanador is able to find one. Immortality field saved a couple on the side of Hostile Takeover, but Eli is able to find a key pickoff here. Takes down the main tank, deals with the turret, and the chase is now on. Wush now finally back in control of the cart, taking Adna down at the back end of the fight. I think it was a little bit of a cheeky attempt at a back cap there from Golden Wind, who will go down, but we'll be back in the next fight with the Molten Core. My biggest concern right now for Wush is the fact that despite their winning the fight, there was two ultimates used to zero, right? Yeah. Like, Self-Destruct was used to open up. Ayanador gets one pick off, but immediately after, when he actually uses the sound barrier to counter-engage when they were up one, and that's a tough place to be. You don't really want to be spending these ultimates in fights that you're winning. So, we'll see if that continues to make a... That's something to keep an eye out on as the series progresses. And I, I, this feels particularly to me, like, standing out of the line of fire of aerial, so there's no chance of being able to get that uh, mech back online. Eli with a quick double. Molten Core does get committed here by Golden Wind to not much effect, and I wonder if that's going to prompt a change. That was a... Oh, a this is not over yet, though, oh, surprisingly. No, Golden Wind pops the overload, does the 1v1 with Eli. Eli has to TP out, and now Golden Wind is actually pushing the cart on their own. Not quite a lot of progress gained on that one, but, you know, uh, props for trying, Golden Wind. Good work. Yeah. It was a clean dive to start that all off, though, from uh, Lush, actually. As you saw, uh, Tsuna go in, split the healing, and then Eli was there to get the remaining cleanup, and that builds up the EMP as a result. Ariel coming out with a spy check. As the Supercharger is committed, but, I mean, EMP can jump us down. Yeah, and, in fact, it does... We'll see the Immortality Field come out, buys a little bit of time away from some of the follow-up damage on the EMP, but maybe not enough. We'll see Tsunaga down here on behalf of Baptiste for Hostile Takeover. I know it's going to go down as well, and a EMP for Wush doesn't amount to an awful lot here. It realistically, you trade EMP for Supercharger, and I don't know that's a worthwhile trade. And, I mean, we saw that. I was EMP and a Primal Rage. How quickly did Tsunaga fall to zero HP? It's a thousand, but when everyone's looking at you, it doesn't feel like much. <laughs> no, uh, now he's incredibly focused. Exactly. Here on this retake now, I mean, you've got the self destruct. Okay, buy uh, some space. Works, sure. down, works down a shield, I guess. <laughs> Tuna now back in on the Reinhardt. Big charge in, will connect there. Saber's going to go down. Morgan Call from Golden Wind may secure a trade, but it's not going to be enough. But this is. A phenomenal investment of Ultimate Spring Wish. They use the sound barrier, they use the set of the coalescence, they use uh, Death Blossom as well. That was very expensive. Yeah, that was very expensive. They are gonna force a switch though from um, from hostile takeovers. The tanks make their way over to the Winston Zarya, so perhaps well, not as expensive. Ooh, okay. That might be another big self-destruct. Only finds one that time, this time getting Adna, and they trade it out with Sudigo to go down as well. Wish now playing heavily on the cart, having to back out here. Hack continuously tried there by Eli. You can hear that tickling away in the background. Still yet to find a connect. Will eventually take out Braven, but in the meantime, they're going to lose Ayanna Dor's mech. Ariel's now on the uh, on the Zarya here with a lot of charge and a lot of ult charge to their credit. Now at 100 and rising, this ultimate going to be online before you know it. The EMP is available. You can see them try to walk, rush forward with it. I think he's going to have to commit it. Man, that was very quick from Ariel. 
Asuna won't survive through that. Disclosure gets one with the Coalescence here, but not looking like it's going to be enough. And there's a big anti out there as well. One last second contest with the sound barrier for good measure, but that is a hack over onto Winnie. They get worked over, and that is it. 48 seconds of the time back. Uh, I mean, there was one cool play there. Eli actually hacks Golden Wind out of the EMP. Slap. Unfortunately, it meant nothing as the fight had already <laughs> ended and the point had been captured. But it was a cool play. Yeah, just yeah, a, a you can't deny play. that. Add it, add it to the highlight reel. Just don't talk about what the consequences were. Yeah. So, uh, I just zoom in only on this Sombra. Don't, like, look at any of, like, the timer or anything like that. But, uh, I mean, that's a pretty decent hold, all things mm. considered, there mm. from, from which is there. Down to 48 seconds, our hostile takeover, right? So, below that minute mark, and now you just have to complete the map. That's kind of your draw condition, or I guess your condition to head into extra innings, so to speak. So, I, I think, you know, a little, I think the one problem here has been which has been making, has been having some expensive fights that they perhaps do not need to go as expensively to, yeah. right? So, I think that's the bigger difference. But, if that can be shored up just a bit, then, you know, we should right back in this. I don't think hostile takeovers are th that far ahead, relatively speaking, so. Yeah, and, and I, I do wonder if we're going to see more of this uh, this dive style coming out from Wush as well, because that, by necessity, mandates more and more resources being poured into your front line to keep them up and running in this fight. And that includes you know, Sound Barrier, Coalescence, as and when they come offline, so it's a lot of heavy investment into what is a very defensively favored comp from hostile takeover. Yeah. See how that uh, how that plays out for them though, right? Well, it's, it's This game hasn't been lost on composition. No. Or won on it really either. It's really been more on execution than anything else. I think both teams have had good looks with everything they've brought out. So we'll see yeah, if that it, steps it, forward. It, it, it feels a lot like the wins and losses that have happened here have been on the back of you know, fairly small differences, fairly small, slight missteps in positioning in, in, in usage for the most part. We'll see Arca making a rotation here, able to take Graven out of the fight. That's rest back up instantly by Adna, but at least there's another 30 seconds here where, where, where you are still going to get hit by rocks if you're Arca, but I am not able to find Braven once again. The res is not yet back online. Eli runs down Slater, and, you know, it's a it's a greedy comp. It requires a lot of resources, but Wush have made a very quick cap on point A here. Surrounding the Conquer, uh, it really was death by... Eli has really, really keep an eye out for those uh, Widowmakers cross map. Uh, even on Control was doing that, but as I was saying, it's death by a thousand cuts more than anything else, right? We saw a lot of surrounding there. Eli on the flank a lot of the time, uh, and and Arca, you know, also doing a lot of damage in the back line. Closure oh. forces the recall though on Braven. That's that's good. That's big. Yeah, Means I mean, that the I card mean, doesn't get staggered out. Yeah, this has been like disclosure all game long so far. Like he's such a threat. You can't just walk in and one clip him unless you are really confident you're gonna win that one v one. Well, Braven's gonna try it again. <laughs> 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 no, focused out this time, got the orb of discord and a lot of that damage went into the defense matrix, so yeah, let's uh, let's run that back and try it again, huh, Brad? Coming into this next one though, I mean, looking for that dive, Suda gets the high ground, they get a pick off early and the D-Mech! Yeah, this is absolutely huge, and Arka's gonna be able to hold on to this uh, tactical visor. And uh, we might even be seeing like a little bit of a stagger out here onto Golden Wind, that's uh... I mean, like, soon as survives with any health, and that's all HP that can go into just getting more ult charge for your healers. Yeah, and I think that was a free fight, right? Like, you don't yeah. really use anything. I think it was a Valkyrie that was committed, but that's it. Everything else was just literally aggression, so. You can uh, see Slater make a switch over now with the Winston as well. So, I, this is coming into this, you only have the, you know, the uh, Molten Core. I don't know that's enough value here, especially with 10 seconds. Well, we're going to see what happens. I mean, that was honestly such good discipline there, but Eli's fourth one was able to find two, even with the Static Zenyatta in play, purposely not moving to uh, to avoid passing that on to anybody else. And this is more than five minutes in the time bank running into C. Let's have a look back at that fourth one. Beautiful stick, Golden Wind and them both down here. Arca oversteps the mark there, though. So they did a 5v6. It feels like a different team of OS than last in their defense, right? Yeah. It's been just enough ults to win them the fight. Okay, as soon as the Primal Rage, Ayana Dull with the self-destruct. Having said that, we did just get two ults committed at the same time on that one. But this time, it's coming up with 
big result. He was able to find Golden Wind. Arca helps with the D-Mech there onto Ariel. And now the payload moving into the final curve here, Lafon. I, I look at you know, just peep the tie back. It's four minutes forty. That's insane. Yeah, and, and the only thing they've got is a pause bomb. There's a pause bomb here for Braven, which needs to come up with two, ideally. Well, there's one. Eli's pulse bomb's gonna go down. As Both is Ravens here. This was the one thing they needed, and it is panic stations now for hostile takeover. They're on some ability characters to get back into the point and keep the fight going. Status is going to be here on the Wrecking Ball. We've got Golden Wind on the Genji, but he's away in the back, causing trouble and receiving the entire focus of the Tactical Visor. Nice bubble from Suna, socks that self destruct having too much of an impact, and it's now back on the Hostile Takeover just to try and stagger this out and burn as much time off the clock as possible. There are four minutes and less than three meters on the clock, and Wush have just made this look effortless here. They're not out of the woods yet, but they haven't had to commit resources in the same way that we're expecting based on what we've seen from them so far. Arthur with another pick, Ariel down. Adnar down to Eli with another pulse bomb, finds the clip, takes out the Zen. It's now Slater alone on the point with the Orb of Discord, focused down incredibly quickly, and it has been the Eli show here in the final 30 seconds. Lands the pulse bomb. It doesn't matter because the round's over, but lands it around that defense matrix to get the d -Mac. And I mean... You said it. You said it past. It looked effortless. Slayer. Effortless. Effortless. I said effortless, but I, it's a difficult word, Lafon. Oh, you effortless. There we go. Got it. Um, effortless. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> Apparently, that's they what took I it without say. effort. They took it without effort. There Lafon. it is. Yeah. Regardless, their attack was spectacularly clean. I, the complaints I was having about their alt economy on the uh, on their on their defense weren't in play at all on the offense, right? Like a completely different team in terms of how they approached, you know, those engages. The support ultimate timings were really well done. And I think that really was a huge difference maker on the offense compared to the defense. They weren't, you know, they weren't at disadvantage into some of the more damage oriented uh, ultimates that were coming online. And yes, I mean, alt economy doesn't mean as much now as it did, say, during GOATS perhaps, but I still think that, you know, if you're throwing away those resources, you make things a lot more difficult for yourself. The fact they shorted up that quickly is incredibly impressive to me. Absolutely. And it's actually looking like it might be forcing, if not a wholesale change, at least a lot of changes here for Hostile Takeover, with Golden Wind picking up the Sombra potentially this time. Uh, you don't like to be in a position where you're okay. you're forced to okay. change with a okay. minute, right? Like yeah. it's still it's still such a risky play, even the Genji. I mean, yes, we've seen Genji play it. I'm not I'm not questioning the pick, but the fact that you're forced off of a strategy just be with only a minute remaining shows that you've been kind of out scouted just a little yeah. bit here. I understand what their plan is here. They want the grab, they want the nano, they want the dragon to get that win and just try and bowl it on down through B from there. But Golden Wind took a ridiculous amount of damage there. Will get out with his head more or less still attached to his shoulders, but with 30 seconds left to go on the clock and no ult yet to show for it, things are not looking great here for Hostile Takeover. Well, they're going to get winning down, so that's a huge start, right? You don't have any more healing left, so that's a big deal. Burning the deflect there from Golden Wind, but we'll find Disclosure. But he trades out there. We'll see the DMEC come through as well. And we've already got two ticks gained here for Hostile Takeover. Ayanador goes down to Slater. Raven with the Pulse Pistols will find Eli. Just clips the ankles on the way out there and takes him out of the fight. And they cap. But now it's a long, hard slog of overtime push for Hostile Takeover. Not only is it the overtime slog, the respawns actually come in before the overtime uh, starts over. So there's going to be a very early fight here in this next phase. The only difference is there's no ultimates online now for the defense. You can see them switching back and Huge forth, trying to resets. figure out what they want to run. And they are at zero across the board. Meanwhile, there's one fight here where Pulse Bomb, Dragon Blade, and Nano Boost, and Salt, uh, Dragon, uh, Graviton Surge will all be online. And you know, those, as long as you stagger out properly, Hostile Takeover have a real chance to make this a long map. Pulse Bomb right into the middle of the character models, doesn't land it, no kills no. on the back of the... And they tag off the points! What? Oh, what? no! That was so unfortunate for Hostile Takeover. They had everything in their favor. And they just, I mean, look, you, you, you kind of get sick of talking about the old Charlie Niner, but no, that's that was a, a pretty egregious one. Yeah, that's a C9. You yeah. know, sometimes, sometimes we make jokes about, oh, that's a you know C8 or a C7. You know, it's like not quite a C9. That was a C9. Oh. 
C9 lull. Yeah, and, oh, and now there's nearly Lord, four minutes for Wush to push that, push that, what, 60 meters after the cap on A? Yeah. That's really not that much. And I mean, I. It's one, those are one of the most heartbreaking scenes because the alt economy was very much in Hostile Takeover's favor, right? They had four ultimates in that fight. They had HP advantage. They just got a little greedy chasing down the weak targets and. Oh. Someone it, lost it, their uh, lost their mark. Yeah, if you are Wush here, then you are laughing all the way to the time bank. Oh yeah, one because you've got so much more of a margin for mistakes here. Like Hostile Takeover played their point A fantastically. Like yeah. the, the, it's such a quick cap and such a short time bank. And the to other throw thing that away is crazy. It, it's not even just like the the execution. It's the mental break, right? Like yeah. it's like. You are doing so well, and then you made the mistake that cost you the map. That's such a hard place to be in. Yeah. I mean, you, you can't really put that too heavily on the players either, because let's bear in mind, down here we've been playing for, I think this is potentially the fourth match in a row for these players. So a lot of time, a lot, you know, playing at this level takes a lot of mental focus. It's difficult. It's going to be the high ground rotation, though. Yeah. As they want to force a, oh, so weak Slater. That's yeah. dangerous jump in. Yeah, Wush's wild ride, and Slater only just gets out with his head still attached to his shoulders, but Eli's there in the back to pressure him out. He can still see how critically low he is, but it soon it goes down here. Braven's able to track him down. And That's Braven's able to get a second here. Arthur looking to equalize the score a little bit, but taken out. This has been a phenomenal hold by Hostile Takeover. Yeah, uh, even despite the fact that three people were looking at Eli, uh, they were able to get Suna out, and we're going to see another change in... So they're going to go with the Winston version of this composition as, uh, you know, I mean, you're going to have the EMP shortly. You're going to have the Coalescence. That's the win condition here. The EMP is a big difference maker, but you have to wither the storm of the duplicate and the pulse one. Yeah, and of course, the Nano Boost as well makes this that bit more problematic. Revan looking for the stick there onto the Coalescencing Disclosure, but can't find it. Slater's able to find one, has the Primal Rage locked, loaded, ready to swing, chases down his opposite number, a self-destruct from the duplicated Deeper of Golden Wind, rounds out a, another hold on the defense here for Hostile Takeover, and this has been more than two minutes burnt off the clock. I will say, though, this is the fight that uh, Wish wants, because they've gotten both support ultimates out now, and both DPS ultimates. Now they have the, the, be uh, the benefit of the EMP, and this means there's no way to really deny it. As long as Eli lands a clean one here, this should be the point. So watch. Self-destructive start of the fight. We'll find one to close you down, but it's traded out for Slater here. EMP is still online for Eli. They've lost two members here for the side of Wush, and the DMAC comes through to Onionador, and so we will see them back out here one more time. But as you say, it is just a matter of time until this EMP is online and ready to go. I've had fight though this one they needed to have, right? They needed to get that one to be very quick. Because the longer you take, the longer you allow uh I saw Taylor to get back into this, right? They, the closer they start to build up the resources. Nana Boost is going to be online in a second here. Passes the pulse box. There it is. He committed early. Gonna Where's the follow up? Three. Gets both tanks. There's Slater run down here as well. Eli with the second finds Adna. Arcus able to hold on to the Death Blossom as well, which can be used to buy a lot of space on the next hold. We'll see the points still roughly available for the contest, but. Draven and Ariel need to get out of here. They need to be ready to come in on this next fight. They can't afford to die here. Yeah, no, this is this is a reason. This is the last fight. 40 seconds left on the clock. Do not go for a contest here on point A. You're not going to get it. You just have to force a fight here on point B with your advantage now. The fact that this EMP is gone means that the immediate win condition is removed. And so you can build off that pulse bomb, off the nano boost. This is this is the last fight of the game right here. Eli crouching in the back, looking for targets here. He knows that Ariel has the potential to deal with a lot of the damage that comes through from Arca's Death Blossom, so they're going to be looking for the hack onto that one. Instead, finds Golden Wind, and the Defense Matrix stays up, so no kills on the back of that one. Explosions able to find one, but now this is almost all of the ults committed for Wush. Hostile Takeover have a couple still in their pocket. There's the Primal Rage available for Slater. He's able to find one here. He's looking for a second away into the back, looking for the supports. Can't quite find the knockdown. Bubble stays up, protects them from the self-destruct. Here's the answering self-destruct. Hostile takeovers. Ariel, we're into overtime. It's a massive player advantage for hostile takeover. And against all odds, they're in a position to continue to take this. Arca's back on the tracer, able to find Slater here. And the duplicate comes through, picks up Golden Wind. Oh, Golden Wind's able to pick up 
the uh, the Brigitte here hasn't quite managed to get that ult online just yet, but very close. Charges very quickly. There's the hack onto Golden Wind. It's unlikely this is going to come off as the final seconds tick down. Would have maybe liked something a little more impactful. We're still into overtime here. There aren't any ult available. Bregman's coming in on a pulse bomb, but it's got to be the mother of all pulse bombs to keep them off this cart. He's still there. Being focused down by Disclosure. Gets hooked out by Anador. The fight still somehow rolling on through, but Wush are slowly, inexorably working their way through and finding the picks, and that is it. One point on the board for Wush, and we're all tied up in the series, LaFont. What a close fight, though, and hostile takeover. Realistically, should never have been in that position. Wush, though, taking way too long with their chosen composition. And uh, as you see the highlight here, I mean, even still, credit there to hostile takeover for making it as close as it was. Oh, yeah. That was some spectacular fights, and realistically, the only difference there was the spawn uh, distance that, yeah. that really won out the map, because uh, obviously when playing, so, playing the offense, playing the map at that close, there's just no way to really combat that, uh, especially with no ultimates online. Mm. Well, that takes us to all tied up in the series now, one apiece, so at the very least, two more maps coming your way. But before we can bring you the next of those, we are going to throw it to just another very short break, and we'll be back with you as soon as we can. Hey gamers, it's me, a giant banana, here with another big banana brain question of the day. Today's big banana brain question is about gorillas. Now, you know what else is a gorilla? Winston Overwatch. But how many bananas do you think a Winston Overwatch would eat today? Is it A, 0, B, 20, or C, 50? The answer is A, none. They don't eat bananas. They eat like termites and bamboo shoots and stuff. Don't know where you got the idea they eat bananas from. Idiot.
Welcome back, everybody. We are we are ready to go into our third map of the game. It's going to be Junkertown this time for our escort map. And uh, just as a heads up, we have had both a side swap and a couple of substitutions coming through. So Ace is going to be in for Eli and Task back in for Suna on the side of Wush. It's going to be interesting to see how that uh, change up really, you know, how that makes a difference. If that makes a difference, obviously, you know, I, I would expect Wrecking Ball. I would expect Wrecking Ball to make a reappearance here yeah. for Task uh, a lot of the time there. Uh, obviously, Tsuna playing the Winston Reinhardt, which must be said was a lot closer of a King's Row mm. than I was necessarily expecting after the time bank differential. But uh, what a, I mean, a spectacular recovery from Hostile Takeover. And yeah. a little oh, bit of a spaghetti yeah. dropping, you know, a little bit of spaghetti on the floor there for. Uh, or yeah, worse at the end, but they, they pulled it out. take a minute to uh, bless Kenobi for getting that so firmly trapped in everybody's heads <laughs> in, the, in the tier two casting scene. Thank you very much, my friend. I mean, it's it's a really it's a really good turn of it's phrase, apt. right? It's incredibly apt. Imagine Just... you have a bowl of spaghetti and then it falls out all <laughs> over the floor. And how disappointed you are! Exactly. Uh, double sniper coming through for hostile takeover with uh, the Arisa Hog again. What? The Arisa is the big one to me. That's uh, that's a tough, that's a tough ass. I mean, obviously you're playing around the halt. Because the shield is not as uh, strong. A task, you know, taking a long walk off a <laughs> very short death box. Okay, looks like um, looks like that might not have been intentional here. We have just had a, a pause, maybe even on the back of a disconnect. So uh, let's let's wait and see what's going on with old Task there. Yeah, uh, I mean, there's a bunch of jokes that come to mind that. Yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, you know, I mean, uh, uh, Junkertown is going to be really interesting, I think. We saw it earlier on stream, obviously, when uh, Man of Class and Ollie were, were, were running the, the show, or were on, on air for us, and obviously that played out a little bit differently, because we saw a lot of Ana there, we saw a lot of snipers, uh, of course, but I, I'm curious to see how that has evolved, you know, how we're going to see players play, you know, how Junkertown plays around, because that fir the first point of Junkertown is very wide open mm. relative to the rest of the map, and so... If you think about sort of the flanking opportunities, there are some, and there's certainly sniper lines uh, for days on the first mm. point. And what I'm curious is that with the two very different styles we saw on maps one and maps two, right? Maps one was very dive heavy, exception obviously control, uh, control center, but uh, uh, the rest of the time was a pretty dive heavy map. Mm. I wonder, and then obviously maps two uh, were uh, was much more, was pretty much dive a lot of the time. We saw a lot of that Winston Diva coming into play. Now on Junkertown with a return to Wrecking Ball, are we going to see the you know more space control? We were talking to Crandop obviously uh, in an interview after his match, and and he talked about the two major stylistic differences, where it's the the poke um, slash spam yeah. uh, Wrecking Ball comp, and then obviously the dive Wrecking Ball comp. Are we going to return to more of that poke slash spam uh, Wrecking Ball here with Tass stepping in? Um, that that's something I'm keeping an eye out on for sure uh, as uh, uh, when we get back into game. Yeah, I mean, looking at what they've got, though, considering that it's, it's a dive with a Tracer and a Widow, I, I'm guessing they're looking for that little bit more of a focused style, you know, Task uh, calling his power drivers, giving Arca a nice lineup to, to track people up through that. So uh, it doesn't seem particularly spammy super now, but look at this line from Arca. Look at this angle. I won't find anything just yet. That's the value there of the Arisa Shield early on in these comps, but the payload progressing more or less uncontested for now. And Raven's able to find Arca. That's a big pick. A lot of threat now off the table, but Raven not completely out of the woods just yet. There is, of course, Ace now in on the Tracer for Wush, looking to try and uh, make life just that little bit harder. Looks like Raven's oh, just, I mean, <laughs> Winnie didn't stand a chance there. Uh, and we appear to have another pause. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, just as we get going, Lefon. Just I mean, we as just we gotta, get going. We just gotta get them out early in the map, right? You yeah, don't wanna be yeah. like in the like overtime fight, it's everything's going on, and oh we have to have a pause, right? So I'll yeah. get them out of the way early. But I mean what the what timing there from uh from Braven, right? He sees the, the, the brig go up, the shot comes through, and all that's happening while there's a the tracer in the back line turns away and ignores her. You know, you're not chasing after the tracer, you're not gonna get into a line of sight with her, so why bother? As long as you yeah. know you're not immediately at threat, which Braven wasn't. Then why not go for uh, go for the actual kill that you can get? And uh, Winnie's the one that pays out for it. So clearly a, a, a good read from Raven and one that tr mm -hmm. a trust in his team, a trust in his support, and uh, you love to see that. Yeah, but it's uh, pretty frustrating to uh, <laughs> have to stop right in the middle of the act as well because like you just just obviously you guys can only see myself and the phone, but we've got the action paused directly in front of us, and it is Raven pointing directly at Ace with an orb of discord 
Raven currently mid machine gun fire on the Widowmaker, and I, I just, I, I want to know, I want to know what happens. Like this is such a cliffhanger. I mean, there should be a to be continued just at the. There the, should the be yeah, of the a little, freeze frame with little JoJo's sir. Bizarre Adventure musical stinger. Okay, we're yeah. on in. As uh, we get back into it, oh, it turns out that uh, the movement there was too good. So yeah, that's uh, pretty good from A. Oh, we're not good enough in the long run though. Orb of Discord, giving a jeez, Braven with the double inside the couple of seconds. That was that was monstrous from Braven. Okay, he's looking for more. Won't find it this time. The Sonic Arrow is a little too late. Ruh -ruh. We'll trust his teammate Ariel to get the uh, actual kill. So that's gonna be the temporary hold here. And uh, I mean. Are we going to see any adaptations? Good wall there. Uh, oh, dear. <laughs> well. Oh, I was just going to say uh, a good uh, shield for my Anador to block the, the Roadhog hook. So. Yeah. Uh, do you know what would be a useful use of this time, Lafon, if I'm to be yeah. perfectly honest with you? is um, Of course, the, the Banana Brawl tournament wouldn't be coming to you at all without help from our sponsors. And so just to run those past you again, as a big thanks to the Opera GX browser and, of course, to TeamSpeak, which is part of the reason why you can hear our voices so crisp and cleanly in these uh, extended mid-game pauses. Yeah, I mean, you wouldn't even be able to hear us at all without TeamSpeak, so it's, well, a, it's a wonder yeah. uh, of modern technology. And, yeah, definitely a, a great sponsor of the tournament. And as a reminder to everyone, of course, I mean, Banana Brawl has been going on for the last, uh, obviously, throughout today, but we do will have games tomorrow as yeah. well for the remainder of the bracket play. So tune in tomorrow as well after the games are done today because uh, just some, some spectacular Overwatch at play here and a, and a chance to look at some of the newest members of mm -hmm. Tier 2, right? At, at play is uh, more than just the prize is obviously tickets to Contenders Trials. So uh, teams definitely want to punch that ticket and make their way up through the path to pro. Could you imagine though? We're actually in, in a world now where Yep Easy, who is the, the all-star streamer team, Currently competing in the Banana Brawl could potentially be in Contenders Trials inside a couple of days. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll give you guys a quick replay as we get set to when we get well as soon as we can get into the game we will. But in the meantime, we'll get a look here at Brave and obviously the last couple plays. But that was so clear. Cool. I mean, I thought when you had the shield up on that one, that was um, must have been like the slimmest of angles. And you know what? Actually, actually, Task should have been in the assist for that pick onto Ace, because if Task hadn't knocked Braven away to the side and into the line of fire to find uh, Ace on the tracer, <laughs> that would never have happened. Task completely pulled the rug out under from Ace there. Yeah, team assist, something, or yeah. a cell, uh, what is it, uh, a friendly assist, not something you really like to see if you're, uh, <laughs> if you're Task and seeing Ace go down. But to your point of, 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 of yep, yeah, easy, I mean, that's a team that has some really good talent on it. I'm not surprised yep. they're doing well. So uh, definitely yep. excited to see how, how they perform. But to I'm, this match, I, I mean, uh, sorry, I cut you off. Go ahead. I was going to say, I, I have to eat crow a little bit because I was watching the uh, the equivalent NA tournament where there was a, a streamer team. And, and to be frank, the streamer team kind of got ruffle stomped a little bit. So I was looking at the streamer team going, we all know that SR is not as good as teamwork. So clearly the streamer team is not going to win. But no, the, those guys pulled it out of the bag today. Yeah. I mean, Craig has been just... Cry has been a really good player for a really long time. Yeah. Even back yeah. when he was a pro player. So, uh, but uh, as we get back here into Wish versus Hostile Takeover, which has been a spectacular game mm. in its own right, some superb Overwatch was played on King's Row. Superb mm. fights, I'll say. Yeah. Uh, overall, there was a <laughs> couple of fights that was a little wanting, but I'll head back into Dunkertown as uh, Task continues his roll around. Well, this is a real problem though, because there's Inversight upline, and look at the fact that look at the difference between Arca and Raven right now, right? This is their next like 30 seconds. Hostile takeover has a massive advantage as soon as this Inversight is committed. Yeah, and oh, Anador takes a big wing on that one as well. And like, there's, there's just nothing available for Wush just yet. Whereas Hostile Takeover, they're about to get the whole hog as well. They're not far for Valk, they're not far for Dragon Strike. Like, this is absolutely Hostile Takeover's point to, to, to lose it. Like, they, they've got everything in their favor. That's going to be Task down. And right now, I, I just kind of, where have Wush gone? Where was the Wush from King's Row that, you know, really pushed us to the limit on that one? There are games that, yeah. Yeah, they're going to get Ariel, so that's the start. And there's no way that that's going to be resurrected because no. the snipers and, and the Sigmar are just chilling right there looking. But Ariel's going to make the switch to Wrecking Ball to get back. And, I mean, the Infrasight's here as well, so... 
Okay, but Raven has been very heavily pressured. Back into the machine gun fire and the roll through the pads. It doesn't quite connect with Raven, so he stays alive that little bit longer. There's the dragon right up the left-hand path, exactly where they're all coming from. Raven finds Archer on the flank and takes him out of the fight, but presents his head hitbox into the waiting storm arrow of Ace. Transcendence is going to come through here, and it's a very trady fight for now. Slater in trouble. Can't even afford to divert a second's attention there to take Ace out of the fight. So focused he was on taking Winnie out of it. But it means that Golden Wind can come back in and find the double. Ark is going to get one, but at this point you are down below the minute marker for Whoosh. Yeah, I mean, though this is not going to be resurrected, Golden is Golden Wind's going to have to walk back the old-fashioned way. I mean, this is still a holdable fight uh, for, for a hostile takeover. Raven's playing up aggressively, looking for those one-shots. Almost found it, too. Hello. Oh, nice pump up the power driver there, and Anador's, Anador's going to go down. Dragon comes in over the side and catches Braven, and it's a DPS out for a tank for now. The res comes in to bring Ayanador back into the fight here. Ace is able to find one. Slater's going to go down to Ayanador here as well, and here's the whoosh I was looking for. It's taking them right into the dying dregs of the map, but it looks like we're on track for a point A cap. I mean, the minefield is zoning out everyone from the objective. No one can touch quite yet. Been a good time by. It's been a really good time by. And, well, predictably, Speaking of perhaps, time buys. Speaking of time buys, uh, guys, I hope you are ready to be here until uh, 1 in the morning. Oh, and immediately back out of the pause again, I think. No, it's going to count that down again. Uh, there we go. Back. Guys, look, we're we're being <laughs> we're being debated just as hard as you guys are, and uh, I I have actually heard from a player in the interval, and they are about ready to uh, to pull their hair out and punch some people because this is going to be this is going to be pretty frustrating. But it looks like this time it is actually a DC on the side of hostile takeover. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, I mean it's a tough place to be, right? Yeah. Uh, it's unfortunate. These are these are the issues we live with, and are currently in and obviously with remote play comes the difficulties of of remote tournaments so yeah. uh, a side effect but nonetheless we will deal with them as quickly as possible and return to the action in just a moment mm -hmm. and uh i mean you know uh, i mean as good as we'll, we'll take every pause now to mention our our two sponsors because uh, great use of the time in all yeah, yeah definitely yeah so uh yeah thanks once again to the opera gx browser the browser of choice for the discerning gamer and of course for team speak for not only providing the technology we're using to bring our voices to you through the magic of the internet but for also providing sponsorship into the tournament so thank you both for that uh still waiting on getting a fix here for this um uh, so yeah i mean we've 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 plugged the sponsors uh I mean, we've won we our can, fourth we, pause. <laughs> we could talk about it. We could talk about a little bit about the, how the first map went. We didn't get a chance to really cover uh, that map because uh, it was so. I mean, we went went from first map into King's Row, and King's Row was such a diversion from what happened uh, mm -hmm. in, in terms of sort of the execution. But King's uh, Lijiang Tower was map number one, and it was a two one, right? It wasn't. It wasn't a runaway victory for Hostile Takeover. They did come out on top in some key fights. I think is a big difference right there. Mm -hmm. uh, they were able to shut down Eli just a little bit, who obviously has since subbed out. But uh, I think the, the the difference there was uh, was playing around, uh, you know, playing around the Echo, play, pardon me, playing around the Roadhog, and, and, and getting value out of those out of those two characters, and uh, um, or denying value from those two characters as 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 the uh, as Legion Tower fell into their favor. So. I think the other thing too was that fight, that one fight that really on 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 the uh, garden, where they were able to contest for quite some time. There was a bit of a problem, but uh, heading in, we are going to see the map, the point no. cap, as uh, that just kind of rolled in. Yeah, I think that's unfortunate. I do wonder if if they'd had Adna already, would we have seen uh, an actual contest there? But for now, we're going to see point B here on Junker Town, and uh, we do have the supercharge available. It's going to be out nice and early here for Slate, so hopefully that's going to buy a bit of charge here for the rest of the team to get that ult online and ready to go. Goldenwood's going to find Ayana Door here. It's a big hook out from Ariel as Arca goes down, and Goldenwind still with a supercharger at their back. Doing damage, but unfortunately the supercharger doesn't really do anything to stop the damage coming towards Ooh, the minefield there's neither res. Oh, that's great. Actually gets the pick onto Adnar as well. 
stuffs up that high ground and actually traps Ariel away from the rest of the team. In the meantime, Task is just going to town on what is left here of Hostile Takeover, and Wush are going to continue to run this through. Oh, that's unfortunate from Braven. Did actually throw in the pulse form there. Didn't quite land, I think, maybe where he liked it, and Wush now running the payload through. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's, it's a great run field from Task, right? Yeah, the Wrecking Ball. Completely. Uh, starts it all off. Obviously, the Resurrect was pretty telegraphed, and uh, uh, denying that and getting the pick and sectioning off players is the perfect ultimate for the Wrecking Ball. So, Task stepping up there indeed. Now, on the retake, though, you're looking at the Bob being able to contest. The only issue is you've got five options here on the offense. Well, five, four, three, two, no ults left. Everybody on the side of Wush pressing Q within the space of about three seconds. So, big investment here by Wush. Ayanador down and then Rez back up again. It's down to Winnie to do everything he can here to keep the Roadhog alive and in the fight. Cart is now stalled out. Task trains out for Slater here as well. Rez is going to come through this time, bring Slater back into the fight, but Ariel gives his life to Body Block to buy add another time to Rez here. Orb of Discord onto Ayanador makes it easy for Golden Wind to take him out of the fight. And really, from Wush, that was just a catastrophic level of investment. I cannot help but be reminded of the saying, five ults you win, six ults you lose. Six ults for zero eliminations. That is just a disastrous one. And I mean, now you're sitting in, you're sitting at last fight territory, you've got pulse bomb and that's it. Yeah. Oh, and you lose disclosure here as well. I mean, this is this is when you want to be pressing Q all at the same time, right? But instead, Golden Wind, with no ult to worry about, just keeps that high ground position and layers in the shots. Ariel's trying to buy space here, and now trying to clear the cart of the mines. We will see the Dragon coming through, buy some space, doesn't get elimed, but will allow a couple more players from which to get onto the cart and keep this going. Task tags back in, but we still have Zen presence here on the high ground. Arca's going to go down here, and that's as far as it goes. And I feel like... This is the second map in a row where we've seen a fight on a cart that has been more or less given over by a team. First time it was a C9, this time it was just all ults thrown in at the wrong time. Yeah, it's, it's not even just all ults thrown in at the wrong time, because like if they'd won that fight, they would have taken the point, right? Like it's, yeah. They would have gotten the objective. The problem is they got all those ults committed and literally got zero eliminations. But that's just, you can't... In fact, I think they actually lost a player despite dumping in six ultimates, mm. so... If you're if you're hostile takeover, I mean you're you're more than happy watching watch do that, but uh, uh, certainly a tough place to be uh, in terms of a resource management perspective because you know at the end of the day, Overwatch for all the mechanical skill that is revo is required uh, to play this game at a high level, a certain amount of it comes down to the fact that if you don't have ultimates, you don't win fights, yeah. and when you use all of them that inefficiently, it, it definitely comes back to cost you. Yeah, it, it means that if you don't have ultimates, you don't win fights. And unless you win that one big ultimate fight, and even if you win that next big that big ultimate fight, the next time through, you are automatically at a massive disadvantage. So, it's you know, it's it's throwing good money after bad. Really, it's saying, okay, well, we're in this fight. Let's just all press Q, and then you get no return on your investment, and you just get rolled the next fight instead. It's gonna be a close hold though, as yeah. the defense comes through and. I mean, it's that Somber Reaper rush yet again. We'll see how that plays out. It's tough to get on the high ground into the real fight here. Very hesitant poke out there from Braven, watching through his opposite number, but no other sniper to worry about this time. Early pick from Ace, but immediately traded back out. Support for support, and hostile takeover, opting to run Slater again on the uh, on the Arista here, capable of just riding this payload all the way through. Tiny Diva taken out, Rez back onto Slater, and uh, we keep the payload moving. That was a lot of respect shown from Ace there, uh, yeah. off to Braven, before even the, the shot could come through. I think it was going to be a miss, but even before that shot got through, teleports away, only gets about 3% uh, ult charge off the back of it, so. Tough place to be. I mean, now you're now the window's set up, you don't really have a counter to it. Ass gets hooked as well. Yeah, you've really, you really got to try and send Ark around the back to try and deal with it, but... Man, Ace is able to run down Ariel here with the help of the hack. So, Whoosh momentarily looking a little bit stronger here for now. They're staging. They've missed the opportunity to hold this hard choke here. 
and Golden Wing's able to find Ace now. So without that utility online, things get that little bit harder. And it's an early dragon from Golden Wind. Buy some space, splits the team, allows those that are left to find the picks. And this has been very, very quick in hostile takeover. There's the res from Adnar. Back up to full strength. Self-destruct finds a big old help and he for nothing. It's going to be on to Ace to tag on just to keep this contest going if indeed he decides to. Nah, he's just building up EMP. He needs he needs this EMP. Because there's five minutes on the clock just about, right? And the golden box of victory is about three quarters of the way through this objective. And if a pickoff comes in here from Brave and it's I mean there's no resurrect available now for Wish, right? If this res if this shot comes in from Brave and you're looking at it just a essentially a snowball. Supercharger in, tanks are not they not safe. A great use of the sights there from gonna make it catches the rotation coming through from Wush. Oh, oh my golden win! That was horrific! What did Winnie do to deserve that level of disrespect? This is huge, and now for Wush, it is down to finding something, anything to do with this EMP and the Coalescence, but they've got to move quick because we are less than 20 meters away from the golden box of victory. Ace is away in the back, might even have been scouted out there by Adnar. Adnar's playing away in the back, knows the EMP is coming in, pops the ultimate, actually gets the Valkyrie off, Slate gets the um, shield down before anything can really happen to them. Hook from Ariel's not going to find too much. There's the casual pick on to Ace. And this is it. The cart is less than 10 meters away from the golden box of victory. Braven is free firing into the moving morass of players from Wush. There's nobody contesting him. There's nobody who can stop him just doing his thing on the high ground. It's a valiant effort from Arca to make something happen. But the damage has been done. Wush are bleeding, battered bruised on the cart and it's down to task alone and afraid to spin to win to stall this out the cart rolls through and lafon we move on to match point with hostile takeover taking us to two and one in the series what a clinical performance there on junker town i mean once they got rolling there was nothing it really felt like uh what could do to stop hostile takeover we're gonna see the highlight here at the end but I mean, this is this is the overtime fight that really stopped the car from moving. You know, Raven was uncontested a lot of this map, whether it was the Widow or the Tracer. We just, you know, saw him just free firing the back line and, and just uh, again. Uh, uh, what are you gonna do when the Widow gets the high ground <laughs> contest? There's not much you can. Uh, can I contest at all? Yeah, basically nothing. And, you know, you're a little bit conscious as a caster of leaning into one player in particular because it is, after all, a team game. But Braven has been so good. You know, I, I sat through the earlier matches as well. Braven was so good in the earlier broadcasted matches. I've seen him playing for other teams previously. He's always been a standout DPS player. And I honestly think there is going to be a lot of competition for this guy in the future. Yeah, and another thing about this tournament, right, is it's not just about teams performing well, because yes, that is very important, but also you can make your mark as an individual to kind of say, all right, I belong at a higher tier of play, right? I need to make my mark. And I think, you know, across the day, we've seen some fantastic play from very uh, highlight-worthy individuals, but Braven so far in this series has been the one consistent between both teams. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so just uh, a little bit of history here. Braven previously of Raw Esports, Vox Nihili and Hotbath. So, you know, all, all teams that we have seen bumping around in the Tier 2, Tier 3 scene for what feels like the past three to four months. Uh, and I guess it's only really a matter of time before you start to see why he's consistently on these top tier teams. I mean, we're just seeing in this highlight pack right now exactly why we've been talking up so much. It's a couple of really clean headshots. And uh, realistically, a big difference. Junker Town, a lot of the time, does come down to your snipers. Mm. Uh, and, and we're seeing why right there, right? Like, snipers can really make or break this first point. Uh, I mean, and and for, fair, uh, fair play to Ace in that highlight as well. That was uh, yeah. that was a pretty solid performance there. Yeah, yeah. again, I think I think Wish has shown moments of of real growth, of real stability, of real uh, impressiveness. Mm. But again, it's not enough to be inconsistent in those moments, right? Like we think about King's Row and their offense, their first offense. It was so clean, it was so clinical. And then whether an adaptation by uh, by Hostile Takeover or a bit of a misstep by which themselves, you look at that second attack around and you're like, all right, where, what is this team? This is a Jekyll and Hyde situation, right? Mm. There's like complete opposites, essentially. For, for, for which you, you're kind of hoping here as we head into uh, this our next map that they're able to stabilize into map number four and they're able to stabilize and actually perform as we saw them on King's Row attack, their first run. 
because that is a different team. And I think if they play that way the entire time, we're in an entirely different series. It is, and, and of course, the thing to consider is being two and one in the series puts Hostile Takeover at match point. They need to win here, uh, and that's it. They've gone so for for Whoosh. They need at the very least a draw. Yeah. Anything less than that, and and that's it. Because we're in the lower bracket, that is unfortunately them out of the tournament. So they really need to start turning up the heat on Hostile Takeover. It's a good thing we're going to Assault, because this is the one map type where I think, you know, I, I, people call Control the get great equalizer. I think Assault is probably the greatest yeah. truth teller. Um, in the sense that if you are, this is a map where mistakes get exposed hard, right? If you are on, on Assault and you're not able to push your advantage, this is where you will fail most of the time, right? And there are exceptions, of course, as there are with everything else in life. But I think for the most part, that statement comes to bear mm -hmm. uh, pretty frequently. It is. I, I feel like the reason that, can, that Assault in particular gets kind of a bad reputation is because it's, it's very difficult to play in an uncoordinated ranked environment. Because really, to succeed, you need to have that good, consistent level of coordination and team play which is why it's so good for revealing what teams are really properly prepared and uh and ready to go in in this level of play so yeah you, you're quite right it is the truth teller it will show us who is the uh the more well prepared of these two teams that adds that overwatch contender spray oh, yeah. and the overwatch profile icon both of which i have equipped uh of on course my why wouldn't you well here yes. on the offense got the wrecking ball Coming back from sooner this time, Ayanador receives a bit of a stun there, but Golden Wings so it's going to be the first to fall in this particular exchange. So, uh, Speaking of which, no that is a sub, in. of course. Uh, Task stepping out, Suna stepping in. Uh, kind of a slow road in so far. No follow-through on the hook. Ace on the trace has managed to make the rotation up onto the high ground. And with a bit of help there, works down the immortality wheel, but needs to be careful because has given away their position, and one hit from that helix rocket and a couple of shots from the soldier will make life a lot harder. Ace with a bit of a spray there. Oh, and now goes for the 1v1 with Braven. Braven, though, had the healing station, knew they could take that 1v1, and Calm Cool Collected takes them out of the fight, looking like a hold here for Hostile Takeover. At least temporarily. I mean, the big thing here now is uh, Ace has had, uh, about half the map locked off from him, right? Because the Torbjorn is a big deal, uh, especially in the terms of the turret. And the fact of the matter is you're not going to one-clip a Torbjorn, right? That's just not going to happen. And that's going to buy enough time for the supports to come in and heal. So <laughs> you're looking at this, and if half the map's taken away from Ace, you have to work the other half of the map. And that makes you very predictable. So we're seeing that here, right? Like, Ace has to play so passively on one side of the map that... You're a lot, just you know, uh, uh, Adnar and, and his, his his cohorts have just been able to play so passively and just draw attention. <laughs> oh, I love it! Please tell that actually worked. I can't yeah, believe it. That was that was fantastic. Good, so, good play, Arca. Play the game. But, yeah, fun fact: if your if your Reinhardt hammer is showing through the wall, for example, that also technically will allow you to uh, to deal damage. Oh, bye. Oh dear. Um, solo ulted by the Roadhog. It's got to feel pretty bad here if you're sooner. I just, I just feel like what Wusher running here doesn't have the the burst potential it needs to get a pick and snowball A here. Like it's all very slow and steady. I mean, this is the fight now where we're gonna kind of see. I think that explosive moment happen because you've got the sustain, which opens things up, right? You've got the transcendence, you've got the balance. Right? Oh, they're both gonna use that. both. Yeah, one atop the other. Adnar manages to get the amplification matrix up and gives Braven all access to it. Secures the pick onto Woody without it. Is trading out, so it's going to go down here. And now the Transcendence is available. Self-destruct thrown in by Ayanador here. And two picks already coming through from Wush. Ariel is now down. Sooner they're looking to get the run down onto Golden Wind. That is it. Golden Wind out of the fight as well. And it was a lot of time burnt off the clock here for Hostile Takeover. But as Rafon said, that was it. They had the ult they needed to make this work. They pressed the buttons, on they went, and that's it. Point A in their grasp. Credit to, to, to Wush, the one thing that they don't lack, the absolute thing they don't lack is uh, the sometimes when you're in a situation where you have that many ultimates, you get into your head and you try not to use too many. Wush doesn't have that fear. I have them, use them. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So. They're, they're, they're not like wine. They don't get better with age. They're better drunk fresh. Oh, 
Man, I look, I'm gonna get a lot of flack because I was actually a big fan of the the Arisa Roadhog meta. The whole hook combos are always so satisfying to watch. And Ariel and Slayer are doing so good at getting those combos off. Okay, this time around, the Sigma Shield blocks up. So I am door having made that swap over. Arca, I mean, this is a interesting approach here. Swords is not very effective. Supercharge is gonna be committed, and they're already taking Tuna out of the fight. A oh, great halt. Yeah, and ooh, beautiful pulse form actually. And this is um, it's been a lot of damage onto Hostile Takeover, but a lot of damage from Hostile Takeover. And Ace had a great stick with the pulse form, but it just wasn't enough. Happened at the wrong time, and arguably onto the wrong player. So for now, Hostile Takeover holding on strong to be. I mean, the one thing about assault, right, is that trades are not good, especially if you're no. the offense. Um, so, I mean, not 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 especially. Trades are not good if you're the offense. There we go. Full stop. Um, it just favors the defense way too much, especially on point B. And uh, you, you need an explosive fight win here if you're the offense to kind of open up the objective. Ace having mentioned to switch over to Hanzo, going on a flank. Interesting. Oh, actually, oh. they have no idea he was there. Absolutely phenomenal pick. And whilst the trades don't matter, the picks absolutely do. And now here's Arca with Tactical Visor, but can't find anything with it. And now it's a one-for-one -one trade. And with the Molten Core in effect as well, that's just it. Nothing's happening there. Raven pops the Tactical Visor. Not sure that was required, but, you know, hey, if it puts a quick end to the team fight, it puts a quick end to the team fight. Actually seeing the swap here. Yeah, I think we're going to see a uh, uh, mirror. We're going yeah. for a mirror, essentially. Obviously, the Torb instead of the um, soldier. Yep. Is that but, you uh, struggling, struggling for the word soldier there, Lafon? I'm glad you're in my... I'm glad it's not <laughs> just me that's struggling with words today. It's uh, it's it's one of those things where you, you get stuck on reading a name and it's yeah. You try to say the name, you're like, wait, the player didn't switch midway through the map. That's ridiculous. <laughs> the character that swap. But I mean, hostile takeover now has genuine resource to keep this going. They've got the transcendence. They've got the rally, and with how aggressively they're playing it up here, this should be a very easy hold for them as long as they don't rush down mid, essentially. Preemptive rally here from Adma, but that is now uh, about set to expire. So. You actually see Wush wait that out there. They didn't want to regress into the rally if they can help it when they've got the time to make that happen. And that was actually a really, really good pick here because taking the Transcendence offline, ready for this next fight, is huge. It means you've got no real defense against the Dragon that has just come online. It's nice. It's going to find Braven here as well. Flux comes online now from Ariel. Gets a couple of in its grasp, but no kills on the back of it. Follow through is good as Ace is going to go down. Ayanador gets to go at the same here, but we get the Transcendence back in and ready to go. So no damage on the back of that, but lots of kills now coming through from Wush. They've started to move their way to the point. But Slater and Braven between them able to find the double. Braven now over on the Widow. Wants to go and take the high ground and control the fight from up there. With the help, of course, of the Supercharger. Drops down. I think uh, he was as confused by that as I was. But again, another hold. 30 seconds to go. And Wush have already managed one tick so far. Not only have they managed one tick, they have the crowd control they need to deny point contest. They've got the Molten Core, and I think this is going to be a big one. Considering who's going to be touching? 15 seconds. Who's the, who's the sacrificial lamb? Who do you it's got? Gotta be, it's got to be Winnie. Winnie's got to come through here, right? The only one with any real mobility options. Suna's just able to get around that. Oh no, a huge amount of damage comes the way of Suna. Raven gets traded out, but it's so hard for Wush to get to the point here. And Adnar's able to find Ayanador. Arca is alive and still running, but the numbers do not favor him in the slightest. Arca's still to find one taste. Golden win out of the fight, but Adnar upon the high ground, raining in the healing, raining in the damage, and stopping the push dead from Wush. 40% capped here. It's not impossible for them to manage the better hold, but now there is a definitive line in the sand, Lapon. Hostile takeover, 40.1%, and that is it. This is their match. Yeah, uh, and uh, if, if Hostile takeover, this is the series as well. It's not impossible. Hostile takeover have not looked unbeatable. In fact, no. in this series, they've been beaten on a map so far. So, what do they have to do? What does Wish have to do to actually bring this back in their favor? I think it really comes down to in those trade fights, right? In those fights where we're seeing a pickoff come in and they get traded out later, it needs to be more efficient for Wish's side. This is a complaint we had on King's Row on their mm. defense, right? It it's rears its head yet again. This time, the margin for error is so much slimmer. 
Um, you need to see. You need I, more punishment for the rotations. More punishment for the aggressive, uh, you know, posturing of uh, of Adnar and and his cohort. Like this is, it's we're seeing. You know, the Zen in that last play was set up on offensive bridge, and it took a long time to be able to force them out. So. We need to see a little bit more effectiveness from punishing those rotations here from, from Wish if they want to make this an even series. I think one of the nice things from Wish is that we have seen some of the adaptations come through <laughs> to like throw a wrinkle into proceedings, like at Ace in particular moving over onto the Hanzo to, as we sort of highlighted, flush out um, the the enemy Zenyatta. Uh, is, is great. I love the adaptive play in the middle of the match, but we've got to see a little bit more. I think for a lot of that match uh, on point B, we saw them just running the same composition through the same rotation time after time and, and hoping to get the right picks to make it work. I'd love to see just you know a, a few more adaptations to help them solve this particular puzzle. I think that's the thing that's missing here for Wush. Yeah, and I will say that there is an element of Hanamura that kind of gets you yeah. stuck in a in a in a, in a, in a cycle of okay well next fight next, next fight, fight we'll switch next, next fight we'll switch fight, but fight. you know because we haven't seen that from the from the teams in the previous maps right we saw uh, if, if necessary a, a commitment to change so i think you know hanamori kind of gets you stuck in a, in a place where you're not quite sure what your next step is going to be and you kind of mm -hmm. try to force one thing over and over and ultimately the map geometry does not allow you to have those force fights because i think that's one difference here is that hostile takeover or sorry uh which has actually forced uh fights that they were tech, uh, quote unquote losing um, because the map geometry allowed them to str to straggle back into a fight, right? Because the spawn advantage was still equidistant um, uh, for, the, for the teams. Obviously on, on Assault, especially for a defensive team, that is no longer the case. You can't force those uh, extended fights the majority of the time. Um, and, and that came back to haunt them on the second point. So. Mm. Obviously, that's going to be a, a, a real case to be made uh, as, as we get set to, to, to finish out the remainder of this series. But, um, yeah, I, I think, obviously, another thing that comes into play is that recognizing your time bank is a, is a huge part of playing the game. Mm. Um, and I, 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 it felt like it was a force fight from... Um, from Wish towards the end of the second... or, or, or to the second... Uh, end of time bank on second point. And they weren't able to get into a position to really contest. Walking through the Molten Core obviously mm. was not ideal. It never nope. is. <laughs> uh, and, and so that realistically, when you're in a last ditch effort, you don't look at the last ditch fight and say, okay, the map was lost there. You look at the previous fights. How did we get to that last fight? And it comes down to the fact that you're not paying attention to your win conditions. Yeah. Uh, notably, the old combos, which I think were a big difference. So heading uh -huh. as, we, uh, as we head back into Hanamura, we're, we're going to see if it can figure out the hold because their their tournament lies lie, uh, you know lie on it we are in the lower bracket yeah this is uh, very much the thin end of the wedge right now and noticing on the defense already uh, one of the ways that golden wind was playing was as the torbjorn to stop uh Arca and ace being able to just run right in the background there's no such consideration here raven is going to be only stoppable really by focus fire or good pick here from ace like and we've seen what raven can do when he's uncontested so i already think this is maybe not the best strategy for dealing with hostile takeover yeah. he was forced to recall out of spawn a uh, helix rocket i believe yeah oh my god slater oh yeah slater went slater went deep and well paid for it soon was able to more than handily win that particular exchange. Braven's are way into the back again. I think gonna wait for the rest of the team to respawn and get ready to come in next. Draw some attention to the point first. Well, slow, so slow. Far. It's a, it's a very slow posturing. I mean, pulldowns are expected. Oh, no, Slater, goodbye. Slater. <laughs> Oh man, uh, the definition of insanity is, I believe, Slater. Just uh, doing the same thing a couple of times, expecting different responses. Braven gets a bit of damage through onto Ayanadol, but nothing particularly meaningful. Um, in, in fairness to Slater, it was a different response. He blew up even faster that time ah, around. Okay, yeah, fair. Fair and valid. All right, Slater, let's have a go at number three. Okay, the shield is down early to allow the rotation into the left hand passage. But waiting for him will be sooner, and he doesn't have the bubble yet. He's having to get out of the way. You can just see the wireframe moving over the top. Ace with an early dragon here. Splits the team, stops them coming to the aid of Slater, who is still alive for now, and at the very least tying up attention. Arc on the high ground. Slater's back in, and well, this 
I think what we're learning here is that Slater is allergic to this particular wooden platform because the second he comes close to touching it, he dies. He will get res though, so we get to see time before it's a big stick of the sooner, and that's gonna be it. You know, it looked like it was aborted when Slater went down early, but the DPS here for Hostile Takeover did more than enough to equalize, and uh, yeah, Arca, Arca wins one but accepts his fate when face to face with Brave. Yeah, that was actually more of a bait play than anything else. Slater goes in, but the nano boost is applied to Ariel, um, and the, there was a great anti that comes in and takes down, uh, I believe it was Disclosure at the end. So uh, as Winnie was trying to get the Resurrect, um, Braven follows up with the one clip. So just all in all, it felt like a set play where Slater was designed to die uh, and oh, ultimately no. work in their favor. But this, that is not a great start. Okay, we got the res and the R ult available here for Wush, but there's already pressure over on the point. In fact, they almost got a tick there for free. The dive comes through, knocks Arca off the high ground, means that there's nobody left that he can actually hit with that attack visor. In the meantime, the Slater's back in with the Prime Rage, finds one, but there is a heavy, heavy defensive bunker on the point with the Immortality Field and the Shield. Suna's able to survive through that, and the team is starting to stabilize around him. Hostile Takeover still have the high ground, and Winnie cannot afford to poke their head above the parapet because Golden Wind is there and waiting with the Viper. That's gonna be, oh, that's this, this that's, that's almost certainly game. There's the grab, locks them all into place. Soon as able to get through, uses the Fortify to escape the grab and get onto point and contest, but the Supercharger is down, the Nano is there onto Slater, and Wush have their hopes ripped out from underneath them. Hostile takeover with a quick, clean, decisive cap on Hanum or a B. Take the map and take the match. I mean, the GGs were there as soon as that pick came into Arca, right? The ult yeah. differential was there, and you just force it, right? The Graviton search the high ground, you only need to clear up one from the objective. A credit to Hostile Takeover, what a recovery. Especially after King's Row. I mean, that King's Row defense, I thought it was going to be a mental break uh, for, for Hostile Takeover, right? You give up that much, and then you struggle, but the objective, the fact they were able to hold the defense uh, on, on their defensive end on King's Row just so much time uh, off the off the clock, it really started to snowball in their favor onto Junkertown, and then eventually here onto Hanamura as they take the 3-1 victory and knock out Wush uh, out of the tournament here at the Monkey Bubble Banana Brawl. Man, I, I really feel for Wush because I, I do feel like they're a team with a heck of a lot of potential. Uh, that just haven't quite found their footing just yet. I'm, I'm going to keep watching these guys because I'm convinced that eventually the players on Wush are in line to do something pretty big in, uh, in Tier 3 and Tier 2. And I think we've also, just while we've got the chance, uh, got to give Hostile Takeover um, even more props than we were otherwise going to because they've managed to win here. But by winning that a little bit quicker, they have enabled Lafon to uh, make his D&D session, or so I'm led to believe by Twitch chat. So thank you very much, Hostile Takeover. Uh, much appreciated. I haven't looked at Twitch chat. I'm scared to now. Oh, <laughs> God. Get a quick look at the replays. Of course, we do have an interview with the winning team. Adnar will be in, and we'll get them in, in just a moment. But obviously, the replay is coming through. Ayanador, really a big difference maker, I think. Obviously, not enough to eke out the win, but... Uh, gonna... Spectacular, spectacular play across the board. Oh yeah, completely. I, I do believe we're going to throw to, uh, at the very least, a little bit of a caster break here. We'll leave you with the replays while we get our uh, interviewee ready to go, and we'll see you in a couple of minutes. Hello there. 
Welcome back, everybody. The final segment of the broadcast for today, and we are thrilled to bring you Adnar from Hostile Takeover to uh, give us his insight into the match. So, Adnar, welcome to the broadcast. First of all, congratulations on the victory. How are you feeling? Well, uh, drained, tired for sure, mm -hmm. but definitely we're happy because we put up a very solid performances around not only this series, but the, the whole tournament so far. Uh, even though we lost against Chicken Nuggets, we still feel we could have done better, so we want to go as far as possible in this competition. Oh, fantastic. Now, now, obviously, it's been a very long day for you guys, right? A lot of games played. As you guys get later through the day, what are you kind of doing to keep yourself in check, to like, you know, keep yourself uh, mentally engaged in the game, to keep your level of gameplay so high? Uh, believe it or not, like, we were kind of chill throughout the whole day. Uh, of course, when we knew that we uh, would have to wait a lot of time between uh, the, the previous match and this one, everybody went, you know, for a fast dinner, chilling, getting, you know, some oxygen, working and stretching. Mm -hmm. So, and comps were kind of okay -ish during the, the whole series, even the the most important moments. We were we were okay, I think. Like we didn't really suffer the the long uh the long day. We just wanted to uh remember that it was actually loser bracket, so we couldn't really make many mistakes. Mm. So the focus was the main uh, the main target. Well it sounds like you've done a good job of remaining focused and calm and uh properly zoned in on, on the tournament. And Looking at the rest of the tournament, obviously it's a little bit hard to predict who else is going to be down in the lower bracket with you, but is there anybody left in the tournament that you're particularly uh, either worried about facing or that you would like to face particularly? Um, well, honestly, I think we are in we are in a point that each team should be kind of worried of facing each other. Like, big respect, but if teams are here, it means that they actually have qualities, and those qualities means that they can actually be probably running for top four at least. Uh, talking about my team in particular, uh, as I said, we should have been played better against Chicken Nuggets. So, actually, tomorrow we're going to play against Where's My Team first, but we really want to have revenge on them. So, okay. that's, that's one opponent we want to face, for sure. Perfect, the perfect timing then, indeed. Uh, actually, I want to dial in onto King's Row specifically, because I think that was obviously, A, the one outlier in the series, but B, um, a big difference was, obviously, in the defense in the second run, you had a massive time bank differential. What was what was sort of the plan, you know, with that four-minute time bank to bring it back and honestly nearly win out King's Row? Oh, I'm so glad you did a task about the scene, by the way, but... We gave you a hard time on air about okay, that. Okay, I won't okay, ask you okay. twice for it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, we knew that uh, they were trying to play some kind of brawlish comp because they were playing Eli, and uh, we were struggling a bit finding the the perfect backline combination. You know, we you saw us swapping through Bap, Mercy, Zen. Like basically, I didn't play only Anna today because they, uh, every other support I, I played them. We we found ourselves like pretty confident in at least one steady uh, main tank. It was Risa most of the time, or Rogue sometimes. Mm. So we wanted to play around that and give DPS a lot of space, but also some sustain. So depending on what they were picking and forcing into us, we were trying to adapt. That didn't pay particularly well because most of the times I was swapping a lot and the ult charge was not was not there, so we wouldn't actually stop the snowball and stuff like that, but... Uh, well, uh, probably <laughs> we without that C9, this series could have been like a 3-0. Uh, personally talking, I know that the Lucy should be the one on the pillow, but for some unknown reasons, I, will, I was like triple booped away, 
And oh. yeah, I I couldn't li- literally tell my teammates to to compile them. That happened, unfortunately. Uh, that's unfortunate, man. When when things get very frantic towards the end of the fight, uh, there's there's not a lot you can do if you get your booped away. Yeah, everyone's doing their own thing. Uh, we, we'll let you go very soon, Adna, but I, I'm just looking over the team list now, and obviously there are a lot of players that I recognize from other teams. You know, you've come from a lot of different places. How did Hostile Takeover uh, actually come together? Uh, well, um, part of this team was uh, all Hothbust core that play into, into Trials. So after uh, Hothbust dropped and Samsung Morrison dropped, me and Wick from Morningstars uh, join Braven and we built around it. Uh, we played uh, the last open division without another name, and then Hostel Takeover uh, came and offered, offered us the spot. So since I personally knew both of the both of the manager and, and the owner, we were kinda kinda happy to to join them and. I'm pretty sure they, they are happy to have us right now because like, we are doing a pretty good run in this tournament. Yeah, it's, it's really good fun to watch. So uh, Adna, thank you very much for joining us today. Uh, it's been a long day, so we're going to let you go and uh, finally finally take a break and, and relax a little bit and recharge in time for tomorrow where we look forward to seeing the rest of your run through the bracket. Okay, thanks a lot. And I think you can go as well right now. I think it was a long day for you <laughs> too. So I, I, I think we, we've had about half the length of day that you've yeah. had. Myself <laughs> and Lafon at the moment. The, the production staff have been here a lot longer. Yeah. But thank you very much, um, Adna, and, and good luck in the rest of the tournament. Thanks a lot and good night. And for everybody else watching, that is unfortunately the end of the first day of broadcast. But don't panic, the Monkey Bubble Banana Brawl isn't over just yet. There is, of course, Sunday's games coming your way. Uh, less than 24 hours from now. So it will be another two pairs of casters coming at you to bring you the final four rounds of the tournament, uh, which uh, means that it's time for myself and Lafon to uh, say goodnight, unfortunately. So Lafon, any words to close out the show with? Uh, I mean, there's the easy one, the joke one, where I just say banana oh. repeatedly. But uh, I mean, no. thank you so much for watching. It's been a spectacular uh, show. Spe- a shout out to all the teams doing a fantastic uh, job today. And a, sh- a shout out to the production team behind the scene as well. Spectacular work across the board. And I'm super excited to see the results of the tournament tomorrow. Yeah, one final shout out, which is, of course, to our sponsors, which is the Opera GX browser and TeamSpeak, who are providing our uh, communication solution today. Thank you very much for your support in the tournament. If you're interested in either of those, then Google either and uh, you'll get all the information you could possibly need. But one more time from myself, from Lafon and from everybody else here at Monkey Bubble. Thank you very much for your attention. Tune in tomorrow for the thrilling finale of the Banana Brawl.